Recognizing the challenges of unemployment, poverty and insecurity, um, Aliko Dangote has advocated supporting existing businesses, particularly manufacturers, to bolster Nigeria's potential for a globally competitive manufacturing sector. However, he stressed the need to re-evaluate the country's industrialization policy. Moreover, Dangote urged Nigeria to implement protective policies that foster the growth of domestic industries into thriving entities capable of generating much-needed jobs and prosperity. I am now being joined by Mustafa Ewila, estate surveyor and public affairs analyst in this particular discourse. Good morning to you, uh, Mustafa. Thanks for staying with us Thank on the show. Me. Thank you for having me. All right, let me start with uh, some, something uh, Dangote said in his keynote speech during the event uh, at uh, the Manufacturers uh, Summit in um, Abuja. He said something about uh, if you, uh, if you uh, import, uh, let me just paraphrase, if you are so import dependent, that means you are importing poverty and uh, you're actually um, importing um, job losses at the same time because uh, Nigerians will not really have um, value to even uh, get um, uh, the work done here or get more uh, job opportunities. But that's just like a summary of what he just said concerning the issues now. He talked about the interest rate, uh, about 30% and how it has really stifled business growth and even uh, getting opportunities for young people here in the country, as in job placement, are very difficult. What do you have to say specifically concerning that? You are a businessman. So absolutely, uh, Aliko Dangote is very correct with his um, submissions. Mm. Uh, Aliko Dangote is more like a role model to every business owner, in, not just in Nigeria, mm. in Africa. Yeah. And um, I mean, his statements also just further lead credence to everything was talked about the new interest rates in the past few weeks. Mm -hmm. So if a, person, a, a business tycoon like Ali Kodangote is coming up with that um, you know, uh, opinion, and I, and I think he's just speaking the minds of, of your other businessmen and manufacturers in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Now, we've talked about this interest rate and we've said that our monetary policy committee Whoever thought about that, you know, reviewing that interest rate upward, mm. did it. I mean, did a very uh, made a very wrong move. Now, um, the new interest rate for twenty six point two five percent. Yes, is a lot of frustrations to the business owners. We live in a country where business owners are left to do a lot of things by themselves. Manufacturers will manufacture or, or generate their own power. They will build roads to their own factories. Mm. They will pay heavy taxes mm. and still pay huge interest rates on loans to run their businesses. You see, there's, this is not the best time to be alive in Nigeria. That's the, as a businessman in Nigeria, that's the honest truth. Mm. The policies that our government keeps coming up with are policies that are taking us aback as a country and even as business owners. Our job. Our unemployment rate right now, as we speak, is put to about 5%. Last quarter of last year, our unemployment rate was about 4.2%. So there is a surge in our unemployment rate mm. due to the fact that business owners are going through a lot of problems running so businesses. Even downsizing. In the past two years, I lost count of how many businesses who have shut down to leave this country, to move to other countries, to start running their businesses. Mm. Just a few months ago, we heard about Microsoft shutting down their businesses in Nigeria. Last year, we heard about GSK. So this, uh, so I don't know, so when all these companies that are giving jobs to Nigerian youth leave, what will be left of Nigerians? What is going to be left of Nigeria, even as a country? Mm. So we're going to be left with poverty. And when poverty happens, it's going, to, it's going to also surge up our insecurity. Mm. Youth will be jobless. They'll start thinking of other ways of survival. The crime rate will increase. So a loss is really wrong with our monetary policy sector. And I think that the CBN needs to do better. If you look at, if you look at a country right now, top 10 list of richest countries in Africa, Nigeria is not on that list. You will find countries like Mauritius. You find countries like you find countries like Egypt. You find countries like Algeria. You find countries like Morocco, South Africa. Nigeria is not on the list of top ten African countries. 
Nigeria used to be the largest African economy, mm. largest economy in Africa. But right now, we've lost that position to South Africa. Mm. Right now, our GDP is about $253 billion. South Africa has a GDP of about almost $477 billion U.S. dollars. Nigeria used to be in that position before. So what is really happening? So a lot of these policies that our government keeps churning out keeps taking us aback as a country. And if somebody like Dangote is voicing out to say, this is killing. Dangote has an employee st strength of over 30,000 people. Mm. If, it, if it ventures to say, you know what, I can't go further, that means 30,000 people will be jobless. Mm. So our, our, I think so our monetary policy committee needs to do better. We are a country of over 64 years old or thereabout. We, at this point in our lives, there are certain things that we should have gotten right. Mm. If you go to countries like, countries like uh, what's it called, South Africa, the interest rate in South Africa is, one, is single digit, about 8.25%. And that's why their GDP is that. That's why they're doing well right now economically. But in Nigeria, our interest rate is 26.25%. We keep increasing this rate every other month. It's like our monetary policy... Monetary policy, policy Committee don't have any other, any other thing to do than to keep incre increasing the so interest rate. A school of thought be believes that uh, most times they just try to do copy and paste the e economic analysis that from what they uh, have seen working maybe in another uh, climbs, in the Western climbs, and they just try to import those policies or textbook um, approach to us, which has not in any way, uh, um, you know, you know, helped the situation because over time there's been one increase to the other you know in terms of um, the NPR and everything and that has not really done any positive um, adjustment you know but the question right now would be how do we begin to support the manufacturing the local players to ensure that our local content uh, you know are put to the world map because as it is right now he talked about um, Nigeria always important and um, because of uh, the issues we have we cannot even think out of the box to even export because we've not been able to meet uh, our local needs because we can't even do businesses here not to talk about uh, uh, branching out internationally so what should we be doing in the immediacy so it's not, it's not so of a bad thing to even do copy, copy and paste. Mm. That's if you're copying from if the right If it works for if them, works then we for don't you. have the same situation. So my Nigeria. point is, we take these advanced countries as a template to a lot of policies that we, do, that we, mm. that we make in Nigeria. The Bank of England currently, their interest rate for a while now has been about 5.25%. Mm. Go to America, their interest rate is also about 5.25%. The country that has one of the highest interest rates in Africa is, is Ghana. So, and that is also telling off on Ghana. What's Ghana doing? How are they doing? They're, also, they're not also doing good also. Mm. Their interest rate is about 29%. So if you look at all those countries that has high interest rate, they're not doing well. Mm. So if you really want to take, take a tour or you know, follow a queue, you should look at countries like Switzerland. They have one of the lowest interest rates. America also has one of the... So not right now, America right now is one of the largest countries that has the best that is doing well economically in the world right now with a GDP of over 27 trillion US dollars mm. followed by countries like uh, followed by countries like uh, there's a other country also doing about 70, 17,000 US dollars so now my my submission is that our manufacturers right now a lot of manufacturers right now are frustrated in Nigeria mm. because of these policies we manufacture, we don't manufacture in Nigeria. That's, no, that's, 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 that's no news anymore. Yes. We import almost everything we, we use as builders, as manufacturers. We import almost everything. And that's because the cost of running a business is very, very frustrating in Nigeria. Now, if we don't get it right with these new interest rates, mm. we'll continue to frustrate many other businesses out of the system, and it will continue to lead to job loss. Now, so... My honest truth, my honest truth, if we really want to get it right, our NPC, CBN, needs to come back to a roundtable and review that interest rate backward. Mm. We don't have any issues. Nigeria is a blessed country. We have, been, we, have been, we have been around for a while. There's been so much happening in our um, you know, monetary system policy. There's been so much happening in the, in the manufacturing industry. But I also do think that the president of this country needs to come up. Mm and make sure that things don't go wrong like this because we will get it wrong. Okay. Now, if you look at what, what has happened in the past two months, our, what, our interest rate has been increased, our inflation rate has been increased, manufacturers are complaining, builders are complaining, 
cost of running businesses is not so friendly, and something has to be done quickly. Well. Okay, but, uh, but if you look at it, really, before I talk about recent development, uh, if you look yes. at it critically over time, you know, uh, a school of thought believes that uh, most of these issues are not uh, uh, that are plaguing our economy, you know, are institutional because uh, we've tried to. Um, tackle the fiscal and monetary policy, yeah. yet they are not working. Ordinarily, if you uh, raise interest rate, money in circulation will reduce, and then somehow inflation would also reduce. But a school of thought believes that if we tackle some of these institutional systemic issues we have, like yeah. uh, uh, addressing the issue of uh, insecurity, okay. um, uh, addressing the issues of uh, food insecurity and uh, food supply in the yeah. country, that way, if all those things are stemmed in the board, uh, farmers should be able to go back to work and there will be food security, and Nigerians can actually buy food at um, normal cost, not like the escalated price of over 300 percent and somehow you know it will have like a ripple effect on the economy do you agree so i i strongly agree with that uh we cannot once we get it wrong once we miss the the roadmap to job creation mm. there's is there is very very impossible for us to tackle the security mm. if people are jobless they're going to become vices for two different crimes mm. If so, an Haidu man is the devil's workshop, yes, we keep churning out graduates every other time, every other time. But where are the jobs for them to do? Mm. That's why most of our graduates today have become content creators online, churning out irrelevant content, sending out wrong messages and all that. That's because there's no job. Mm. Nigeria is a country of over 220 million people. South Africa is a country of about 59 million people. Mauritius is a country of about 1.3 million people. Mauritius right now is one of the leading top richest African country right now. Mm. You will find countries like Egypt, there you find countries like Morocco, Botswana, Libya. They are, these are countries that have less people and they are small islands doing so well. Nigeria, we have all the resources, we have the land, we have the man, human capacity in terms of numbers and we're not doing... I have been to countries, I have been to Kenya, Rwanda. These countries have 24 hours power. For us to tackle these systems, these issues systematically, we must, that's why Dangote is saying no power, no growth, no prosperity. Mm. A country that has no power will not grow and there won't be prosperity. True. Countries where we still, after many years of independence, we still struggle to have common 24 hours power. Mm. It is only Nigeria that I know that has that discrimination of band A, band B, band C. Mm. Every country that I've traveled to in my life, has 24 hours power and there's no discrimination for whether to to have, to, to have the high, high income earners on band a the low income earners on mm. that's not i've never heard that in my entire life once there's power everybody has access to it provided that you can vent you know as, as you know pay as you go mm. so the, the the whole idea of you know having band a band for me is total discrimination i think should be stopped mm. right now we should be having we should have we should we should we should have uninterrupted power system in our country as we speak today okay. but I think deliberately that area is also being scuffled but that's one of the root causes of where we are today okay. manufacturers cannot survive go to all the industrial areas in, around Lagos mm. all of the, a lot of them have abandoned their you know factories mm. they can no longer continue to produce okay. because of the cost of production is killing okay. bank loans you know as high as over 30 percent and that's why you have somebody like Dangote who is crying out to say you know this is not sustainable. All right. Uh, so as we begin to round off um, the discourse now, recently, aside from the issue of uh, you know uh, interest rate, um, businesses have uh, complained about um, taxation over time and how it has impacted on their businesses, uh, both uh, manufacturers, both farmers, both even uh, you know people in the real estate um, um, spheres like you and um, other business um, sectors. Now, but. From what we hear, the federal government is uh, exempting uh, some sort of tax. That's the withholding tax for farmers, for manufacturers, I think small and small and medium enterprises. So how, in as much as we're still trying to tackle the issue of interest rate, how far do you think uh, this uh, uh, exemption for taxes for this set of businesses would actually uh, impact on the economy? So I think, I think that's a good step in the right direction. If they are giving them this... Uh Exemption. Exemption for them to have this leverage. Not to, so, for, mm. so for me, we always and we must continuously, to, we must continue to look for ways to make, to create an enabling environment for our manufacturers. Mm. Those in the agricultural sector right now are, you know, doing, are trying to, you know, do so well to see how we can salvage a lot of situations in the agricultural sector. 
in the in, in the past few years that sector has been you know has been looked away from and for i mean look at look at what has happened in the past few months mm. cost of food food items has you know has increased mm. and for them to continue for them to for us to reduce to for us to reduce that cost of those cost of food items mm. We need to make an enabling environment for those people in those sectors so that the burden wouldn't be too much on them to carry. Mm. They are experiencing so much already in terms of funding. They are experiencing so much already in terms of other security issues. So for the government to come up with that idea, I think is a good step. Mm. And I think it will make you know, life I mean, somewhat easy for them. Okay, so let's uh, specifically address um, the real estate sector, which yeah. has always been seen as a very thriving um, sector. You know, they can even use to buffer inflation and all of that. But with, in all of this, I want you to maybe walk me through how this interest rate has impacted directly on the real estate segment, once again. Okay, so, so the, so the um, interest rates, the new interest rate from the, the APEX Bank, the CDN, and also the rate of inflation right now. Oh, yes, I mean, so the question is, are, as real estate practitioners, are we also, you know, feeling the, you know, feeling the, the, the pinch? Yes, we're also feeling it because now the, the purchasing power of clients has, uh, you know, have drastically reduced. If you go around the whole of the island right now, you see a lot of properties put up for sale. Some, has even, some are even up for rent. It's difficult to even get it to rent, to people to rent it. It's difficult to get buyers because right now everybody's trying to adjust to the new, to the new, you know, issue of the new interest rates. So even to get loans from banks to buy properties right now is a problem. Banks are even, both by microfinance, the mortgage banks, a lot of them are even scared of giving out loans because we talked about it, um, you know, non-performing loans last week. Yes, so we these did. are issues. So, yeah. so if, if you give out loans right now for people, are you sure that you get back your money? Yeah. We said last week that our right now, our non-performing loans right now with the SMEs is close to about 1.32 trillion. Mm. Those are issues. So that means some bank right now are suffering, are, are suffering because there is difficult for them to recover loans. So right now, so the real estate sector also is also affected. Purchasing power of clients have reduced. You know, in the past uh, few months, I, I mean, I don't think I've sold any property this year mm. as a real estate person. And it just goes to show that everybody is feeling, feeling, that, feeling that blow. And I think that something has to be done. That interest rate has to be reduced. Our inflation rate also has to come back, has to also come back to what it used to be. Mm. Right now, our inflation rate is almost about 30%. Yes, it is. Cost of building materials have increased. Cost of paying for services have increased. So it's, so it's, just, it's just trickling down. I think something mm. has to be done. All right, something really has to be done uh, as soon as not so that our businesses can actually survive and uh, you know, Nigerians can uh, you know, get a gainful employment. So the issues of uh, insecurity and uh, youth restiveness can be addressed uh, big time because if we don't uh, tackle all of this, uh, our economy will suffer when all the manufacturers and local players leave the country for other countries where they can get um, ease of doing businesses. We are the ones that suffer. At the end of the day, we keep on importing and we keep on spending so much of um, you know our scarce um, forex. Thank you so much, uh, Mustafa Iwinla, for, for your time me. and the uh, insight that you have brought on the show. Well, that's the size of the show for today. I have been speaking with Mustafa Iwinla. He's an estate surveyor and a public affairs analyst. And we have been looking at the issue of uh, uh, interest rate and its impact on the business climbs in Nigeria, and of course, how it's impacted on employment and unemployment specifically in our country. My name is Justin Academia. Many thanks for being a part of the show. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.